Hello and welcome to Saxworks. We're so excited to have you here for our lunchtime discussion about presidential history with Dr. Thomas. Oh my God! I just was a uh, Balsersky. You're it right, right on point. I right. I have. I, You're good. I should have checked that before. Dr. Thomas Balsersky, presidential historian and author of this fantastic book, uh, *Bosom Friends: The Intimate World of James Buchanan and William Rufus King*. So uh, it's it's always the the best friends, the best friends that that have uh, the se that secret influence on the trajectory of the entire country. So I'm actually interested in hearing all about that relationship and um, the seeds of which we are still negotiating today. A little bit about Saxworks and a little bit about me. My name is Rachel Sklar. I am the VP of Programming and Content at Saxworks. Saxworks is a membership club for co-working, for amazing programming, expand your mind for uh, wellness activities, for physical fitness, for sitting and inhaling oxygenated plant air, um, really for anything you need it to be. It's 2022. We kind of just need a place to go that isn't our office and isn't our house. I, I mean, that's how I feel. I'm just trusting that that's why you're all here. The All of you here who are so fascinated by presidential history and the delicious lunch that we will also be enjoying as we enjoy Dr. Balsersky's wisdom and uh, insight. So. Should we jump right into the ranking, or should we? Uh, well, I have I have a slide you, yeah, you or two a first, okay. then the rankings, and then more slides. Okay. So um, if you can bear it. Um. Yeah. No. I I I just want to I just want to know. I want to like first. I'm so interested in your methodology. Like, what are the criteria? But you have a whole situation. So let's over to you, Dr. Balsersky. Got it, Rachel. Um, and hello, everybody. So great to see. Uh, such a lively audience here today and to meet all of you in person. Um, I should say that uh, the title today is just one number off in the misleading category and we'll see if we can guess why that is in a little bit, but it's a good way to start to see if you can catch uh, perhaps the error is, involved. Is this the time where I disclaim and say that I'm actually Canadian? <laughs> because I'm actually Canadian. <laughs> So, so the, the title expert that, <laughs> here. The title talk is ranking the presidents George Washington, Joe Biden, and forty-four others, and that it's in that last part that I will attempt to correct. Um, I'm Thomas Balsersky. I teach at Eastern Connecticut State, but I, hear, I live here in the city, and so I'm so happy to be here on two two two, two two, which I just have to give a shout out to you numerologists out there. This is a special lucky day, not just because we're all together, uh, but apparently. There is going to be a record number of weddings taking place in Las Vegas. They've opened up a temporary chapel at McCarran Airport. So again, there's still time if you're in that department. That is a classy wedding if um, I've ever heard of one. Two, 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 two. So happy twos day. All right, so the game today, and it is a game I think, is to rate and rank the presidents. And I did it a little more formally through the C-SPAN poll last year but I think there are more fun ways to get about it. And one of the most fun is through something called Tear Maker. Has anyone actually participated or ever seen a Tear Maker before? I have not. It, it does get a little bit into geek culture because there are lots of ways to tear all sorts of things. I've seen Dragon Ball Z tiered. I've seen Pokemon tiered. And yes, it can even be done for tearing the president. So what you're seeing uh, in the, the miniature, and I'll pull it up on the, the larger screen in a moment, is the Tear Maker that uses an S, A, B, C, D, F ranking. Now the A, B, C, D, F part is familiar to us. Those are the, the dreaded letter grades or perhaps the happy grades. I'm sure we all got A's um, at some point in, in school work. But the S part is actually what makes Tear Maker a little bit different. It's called the superior category. And usually what you do after rating and ranking on the A through F scale is then you pick out one or two who have stood out in the process as superior who then become the, the, the kind of the category for greatest of whatever you're doing. And so we will, we will eventually get some superiors that emerge from today's process. Now, as I said, uh, Tier Maker can be used for a bunch of stuff. So what I want to do now is share um, my Tier Maker that I'll be using today. And it's going to be the predominance of what we uh, do today. And again, we'll, we'll show you starting an A, B, C, D, F. And the first challenge is going to be to actually be able to visually pick out the picture of the president to then identify to the person. But so, they all look so different. 
<laughs> right. Well, and the fun thing is going to be um, some of these pictures are photographs, some are portraits. So we'll, we'll sort of be testing our knowledge. And I tried to see if I could get it in chronological order, alphabetical order, but the way it shows up is actually random, so it even adds another level of challenge. Don't mind it's me. It's an order men first, <laughs> then women, right? Yes, unfortunately that means mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. um, men only. Um, but I don't have very much expertise in this category, but I do have opinions. Good. So. Well, and th that's what I'm going to be talking about after we rate and rank, and even we'll, make, we'll take a break, I think, in the process to think about methodology, since what I have here is, um, first of all, working off prior, prior rankings, a scale that isn't A, B, C, D, F, but actually a 1 through 44 scale. And the last ranking that was done did not include the incumbent Joe Biden. And I will, we will definitely rank him today, but we'll do so last again to try to get as much perspective as possible on the, the year plus we've had. So I've, had, I've done this on a 1 through 44 scale, and I've also done it before on a YouTube channel called Dead History. You can check out another ranking I've done where I did this in collaboration with another uh, presidential enthusiast. Uh, so I have my prior rankings. I have the ranking I did as part of C-SPAN, but I wanted to try to today see if both through input uh, from Rachel and the audience, if we could maybe come up with a new ranking, how we feel today. After all, this is just our effort made on 222. Two, two, two. Uh, I'm, I'm ready. What okay. do you need from me? Anything? It seems like maybe nothing. Well, I appreciate it. Okay. Um, I think it's sometimes good to kind of set the tone with someone that is a benchmark, someone we can all agree upon as being sort of uh, the person who defines the category. And when it comes to the A category, the man who is generally thought to be, without a doubt, um, an A president and someone who I think we can agree upon, again, uh, in this President's Day holiday moment <clears throat> is Abraham Lincoln. You'll see I'm dragging him up to the A category. Now we'll talk about whether Lincoln is in the running for the S later, but I think uh, given that we are celebrating his birthday this month and another A president, George Washington, I think we're starting to see where the pantheon of the greats are already emerging. And it is the case that both Abraham Lincoln and George Washington have been in the top three of the presidential rankings since they began in 1948. So these are two men who are universally considered great presidents, or to use this uh, ranking criteria A. Can now, I interject oh, please, say go that ahead. these are also two presidents who figure prominently uh, in two excellent musicals, <laughs> uh, Hamilton by Lin-Manuel Miranda and Assassins by Stephen Sondheim. So I guess I'm bringing down the vibe a little bit. No, it's fine. Um, in fact, that's the whole point. For them to be truly great, they have to transcend their presidency, transcend their historical moment, and to live with us in our popular culture and in our, really our national culture, which is to say, President's Day is a kind of made-up holiday. It actually was first sort of established in the 1960s. It's really, though, um, Washington's birthday we celebrate. And the purists out there will always rebuke and say, there is no such thing as President's Day. It's just Washington's birthday. And ironically, today is Washington's birthday, but because President's Day is the third Monday of the month, it can never fall on 2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. Wow, there's a lot. I feel like the weight <laughs> of this date here. It is a weighty date. It truly is. A lot of stars are aligning. It was going to be 1776 yep. and then 2-2-2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. I think so. All right, so we are kind of now, I think, established some, some greats. Um, where I go next is hopefully uncontroversial, but anytime you enter in the last century, it starts to get questionable for some people. And for me, I'm going to put Franklin Roosevelt as another A. These are actually my top three as well. Um, and when I rated it, I used these three as my benchmark um, for the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries to kind of compare all the others. And I tried to do so fairly within the category. But you're going to see here what I like to call the bias towards the present and the recent past. We tend to both polarize our recent presidents as very good or very bad, and we tend to look back on a certain period in American history almost nostalgically as a period of greatness. And it's been a part of our political culture recently. We've seen it in slogans across our... We don't need to say the slogan. No, we won't. But okay. it's to say it has a lot of cachet, and it's referring to a period really between the 1940s and the 19. 60s in this country, and those presidents are going to rank very highly. And in fact, as we move along on the ranking here, 
I'm going to move up Harry Truman to the A category. I'm going to move up his successor, Dwight Eisenhower, to the A category. And I'm going to move up Eisenhower's successor, John F. Kennedy, to the A category. And I'm going to move Lyndon Johnson, Kennedy's successor, to the A category. Now, I, I treat them as a block. Again, they are, these are the presidents between 1945 on FDR's death and 1969 when Johnson leaves office. They all rank within the top 10 in the last poll on C-SPAN. They all are now men who have certainly, in the case of Kennedy and Johnson, very real critiques against their personal, uh, their, the, the people they were. The Lyndon Johnson documentary on CNN uh, this past weekend was very interesting. Kennedy is perhaps the most mythologized president in history. And I would say if you're of a certain generation, the one you certainly have a, a soft spot for. So. No, this is all fascinating. I mean, a, a, a giant caveat, obviously, that mm -hmm. this were, these rankings are sort of um, like the conventional yeah, presidential wisdom and that uh, we're not here to, to lionize no. presidents No, we're not. And again, uh, the comment could be made that uh, we perhaps put too much value in the presidency as an institution and on the individual biographies of these men. But it's to say that it's a way, I think, an entry point into understanding American history. So I think there's a value to have a conversation around some of the moments in which these presidents were, were in office. Well, I think it's also interesting because these are, these are the people who also, like, I, I hate to bring it back to musical theater, but I love <laughs> to bring it back to musical theater because my first exposure to FDR was in Annie, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, these are, these are transcendent. Yeah. People, but like Calvin Coolidge, like my exposure to Calvin Coolidge was uh, in a plot line on Family Ties. <laughs> so again, Canadian. Um, but like, where where did the sort of the Calvin Coolidges? Well, and I think this is a good time to t maybe take a breather and say, should we in assessing greatness, therefore put failure or mediocrity right up side by side? I, what I want to do though is to finish my A yeah, category, no, I'm sorry, I'm only sorry. just yeah. to say then do if it. they don't fall in there, then you know perhaps why I it is. I just wanted to give Calvin Coolidge some light, you know? Yep. He just never you know. gets the shine. So I think I've, I've, I've hit a peak boomer nostalgia here with Truman through Johnson and I maybe fall, f fallen into a trap and that's understandable, perhaps. Um, some others who have ranked great include Theodore Roosevelt, the distant cousin of Franklin who has been uh, in some many ways surpassed and overshadowed by Franklin, but who's the fourth figure on Mount Rushmore. And for that m point, we can't then ignore, uh, in terms of this notion of greatness, that Jefferson, number three on that list, um, belongs in that same category. And again, these are sort of qualities of greatness. And I'll talk about how we define greatness and the things that have led us to carve a whole lot of stone with four faces on it, Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, and Theodore Roosevelt, Mount Rushmore. And I'm going to put one more on here that um, for some is controversial, and this is where I've gotten, actually of all the people I've ranked as great presidents, the most flack, and that's Woodrow Wilson. Um, and he is, as we'll see later on, uh, a president who's fallen from grace in many ways in the public and in the, in the popular arena. Uh, just recently, uh, a school in New Jersey removed its na the name Woodrow Wilson from its high school, and there, that's a trend that's happening. So without getting too much into it, I'll say that greatness is something that can change. And Wilson's on the cusp right now, I would say, of falling uh, much further down in the rankings. I mean, I feel like it's only fair to say that Jefferson, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure there was a school that, or like a public buildings right. have, have quietly, Oof. tacitly removed it, Jefferson's It was name. louder than that. Here in okay. the city, our city council room, the mayor, mm -hmm. Mayor de Blasio, one of his last acts was to remove a statue uh, of Thomas Jefferson. It was a statue or portrait. I think it might have been a portrait, actually, of Jefferson from the council's meeting room into another space in City Hall. So it's, it's actually, it's, it's who's occupying public space, who continues to be worthy of public veneration. And that might be a different way of assessing versus greatness, mm -hmm. versus something of, that could be more about significance in American I history. I mean, maybe like greatness with mm -hmm. a giant asterisk. Well, there certainly are. Okay. It's a game, and it, it definitely has to be qualified and argued out. So. That's my great presidents. I thought I'd just stop here and see if anyone agrees or disagrees and uh, tell me who else should be great or who shouldn't be great, and I can move them right down. And Coolidge fans, this <laughs> is your moment. Please do. I'm really waiting to hear from people. I have more Coolidge jokes. I oh, don't. Gosh. I have no more. I have no more, I promise. Okay. Okay. Well, it's, you keep coming back to Calvin Coolidge, but... Uh, there's no good uh, reason for it. It's literally from Family Ties. It was a great episode. <laughs> Um, but Coolidge is actually a conservative darling, and he is um, yeah. one who's risen quite a bit in the rankings recently. And so he's actually someone that I personally don't, doesn't believe belongs in the great category. 
But if you were to go and search these tier makers, depending on the bent of some of the people ranking, you'll see Coolidge way up there. So I'm going to actually uh, pass on making Coolidge a great president. All right, let's move on to the next category, which is the Bs. So these are a near great. These are people who probably you've heard of, um, but whose accomplishments are eclipsed by some of the greats. And um, so there's some recent ones in here and some not so recent ones. I thought I would just start with the recent one. I'm going to give Barack Obama a B. That puts him near great. There's a, a strong case that he is um, going to rise further in the rankings. He's actually gone up most recently in, in the last into the top 10, but I still have him on the border between great and near great, so I'm putting him as a, what we would call strong B. Can I, can I ask Please. why? Um, it, I think it has to do with the nearness of it all, and you'll see here too, the most recent president in the great category is Lyndon Johnson. There's something about the historic distancing involved. It's hard, I think, to truly understand Obama's greatness right now, but I think it is becoming clearer with each passing year, each passing presidency. And I guess we don't have enough of a picture of, yeah. like, is it, when you're talking about greatness, like, is it, um, is it, is it the president in the context of, like, the, the, the foes, like, the challenges faced? Right. There's um, an argument to be made that uh, President Obama had, like, a whole extra layer of challenging. So relations with Congress, for example, should be one of the categories, and it is one of the ways I ranked him in the C-SPAN poll. Performance in the context of his time, that's another way. There's actually 10 categories that I first did this to help me figure where I put him, and in each way, he does stand out very strongly. I think performance in the context of his time, he's strong. I think relations with Congress, he's weak, actually. And whether that should be sort of playing the game of blame is a real question. Do we want to put the blame on Congress or on the president? And that's where I think it's hard to truly see his performance uh, in this moment. I mean, I, I like to put the blame on Mitch McConnell. Of course. You do. I mean, there's, there's, this is where it's like, if we're still doing that, I know. We're, too, yeah. we're too close. We really don't have a lens yet, a perspective. But the fact that he's going to be the most uh, highest ranked in our lifetimes, let's just say, for a younger audience, um, should tell you something, that he is a near great, if not great, president. <clears throat> And some other ones, perhaps then, uh, I have him lower than Barack Obama, but there are people who will make a case for Ronald Reagan uh, as a great president. I do not. I have him as near great. And I see Reagan in some ways and Obama as both <clears throat> being strong and weak in the same ways uh, and defining their generations. I think Reagan, we, we tend to have him on a pedestal at this moment. I don't as much. In fact, I put him a step below Obama. I mean, again, I feel like these asterisks are like <laughs> bubbling up in me, and I, I, um, I know it's, I it's know. hard to. There's, to there's every be sitting through a pandemic, yep. and not yep. draw every a line to one, the Woodrow previous Wilson, pandemic. That he, Woodrow Wilson said not a word about the great influenza of 1919. Uh, Ronald Reagan did Wait, not use really? the word AIDS for six years. Um, there, there are some damning critiques to both these guys. But um, he, I'm in terms shocked. Of that, so, yep. what, uh, mm -hmm. so the the, pan, the flu pandemic yep. just did not figure. Never in. once was Woodrow Wilson addressing that issue. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, exactly, and it, it depends on what we want to go after. And um, when I did this ranking on YouTube, check it out. I was just crushed on Wilson and Reagan, and the, my co adjudicator TJ. Uh, force me to move them down to the D. Oh, can I do that? Um, you know what? This, let's do it. I'm going to give you your first can call, I? friend. Who Reagan, should I, Reagan. Reagan. Where does he go? Is he down here? Because that's, wh that's where... This that's, is a non-denominational discussion. I can't where. vote in this country. I am just... <laughs> See, um, but this is what happened. I, 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 I wasn't sure if we were going to go there right away, but you know what? I can't, have at it. But this I'll is give the you, thing. We can't I'll give have you at least five. Okay. One per category. So Reagan's out. That was quick. Uh, I just... I, 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 who should I lower? It's hard to be in the arts. Who should right. I lower on the A category? Oh, oh my God. Uh, you get one. How about I'm that? I'm not sure I, I, I'm not sure can, I know you enough. Can save, you I'm can not sure I know enough. You to can save who you want to kill down no, a, no, a no, notch no. here. Um, um, I'll <laughs> leave that to Sondheim. All right. Then you'll just have to bear okay. as we go through some obscure Does ones. Any, I mean, are there um, any other? Is this the opportunity? Like, I, I uh, can I buy a lifeline? Yeah, this I would was, be if we were on a game show. You would poll the audience. They would vote on their little clickers, and then we would see the result who should be knocked down in each category. But let me do my Bs while you're thinking about it. James K. Polk, William McKinley. Um, <laughs> um, this people may not like me, but yes, Bill Clinton for now, a B. Um, John Adams, a B. Um, Ulysses S. Grant, this is actually someone who's risen quite a bit. Andrew Jackson, a B, and George H.W. Bush, a B. 
Okay, those are my uh, beats. The, the Andrew Jackson of Bloody Bloody Andrew yep, Jackson? Yep, that's right. Okay. And again, and we're talking about this greatness category, which is going to include some true villains from American history, people who, again, have fallen completely out of favor. Both Wilson and Jackson have fallen supremely in the presidential rankings. I still hold them in their categories. But as you'll see when I get to the, the slides later, Wilson is now more in the B category for most people, and Jackson's fallen to about the C category. But I hold them at the edge, uh, sort of just hanging on to their, their prior rankings, even though both men have taken big hits, as we'll see. Um, but I'll take now anyone else. I will give you one more, either up or down at this point from from, I'll literally move anybody. I genuinely didn't think ahead to like <laughs> how power. stressful this would you feel. Have, you have some serious power over this, guys. Please, shout it out at any point. Let me just go through some of these because yeah. these are not going to be so memorable to many of you, but they're actually significant. James Madison is a C. Um, William Howard Taft is a C. Um, <laughs> these are, again, some of these names are fun, and maybe you, you know them, maybe you don't. John Quincy Adams is a C. <clears throat> Gerald Ford is a C. Um, Jimmy Carter is a C. I'm so <sighs> sad. Anthony, Anthony, uh, our Anthony Valdez Strickler, who is, uh, runs the front desk mm -hmm. here, uh, is a big presidential oh. uh, fan, and he he puts Carter Car as his number one. See, the, I, those are the kind of people I like to meet. I love people, strong Jimmy Carter fans. I love people who've been to Plains, who've met him on, a, at, on Sunday after Sunday school. I'm all for it, um, but he's a C. Um, <laughs> Grover Cleveland. Now, here we get finally to the error that was made, and if you've been thinking about why I said there was an error, this is your chance to chime in. I, I... Grover Cleveland was twice elected president. He's our 22nd and 24th president. So while Joe Biden is our 46th president, it's only the 45th person to be president. So in fact, uh, it should have said <laughs> 43 uh, others, because if we're counting people, Grover Cleveland should not be double counted. OK, then, then can we just pop Hillary Clinton in there for winning the popular vote? <laughs> um, I hate to say it, five other people would have to get that claim, uh, as five times a president has lost the popular vote and still been elected. This so. is why you're here. <laughs> okay. I get to make my point, and you get to okay. put it firmly in the world of fact. Um, Chester A. Arthur, known for his sideburns. James A. Garfield, known for being assassinated, unfortunately. It's a great song, uh, though, in Assassins. This is how I learned about so much of this. Yeah. It is, okay. Okay. I, Rutherford B. Hayes. Um, and I have Calvin Coolidge as a C. And let me tell you again, depending where you stand ideologically, this is unacceptable to you. Um, Cal Coolidge has been lionized of late. He's actually sh risen to, towards near great in the rankings, but I still have him as, have, have him as average. Okay. Again, I'll take any, any person in the audience, any person in the world who could chime in. Uh, I will take a movement in either direction. Would you like to I No, to I just in? feel like I really want to rewatch that Family Ties episode to see why Stephen Calvin Keaton, Coolidge. who was like such a liberal, would I have know. been doing a documentary on Calvin Coolidge. Yeah, that's... Michael J. Fox, right? Yeah, it is Michael J. Fox, but <laughs> um, this particular episode was all about Stephen King. Yep. Judith Light was in there. I mean, yep. it's a, it was a Family Ties. It was a great show. Boy, a zeitgeist for the generation. Yeah. All right. Dating myself here. Um, now, I've, we've already seen Reagan drop to a D, so I'm going to have to expand the category because I had Benjamin Harrison. I had W, George W. Bush. I literally forgot about him. Yep, well, Both then, of them, um, actually. That's known yeah. as a D or yeah. a... Below average, not a failure, below average, okay? Um, <laughs> this is stressful for some people. Yeah, no, I'm finding this um, Zachary Taylor. Um, and now I'm going to cede the floor for the song and dance show of Millard Fillmore. <laughs> I just really think it's fun that he is the only president who has like a double letter in his first name and his last name. That's my favorite presidential factoid. Yes, indeed. Uh, right? Every little bit counts. He's, he's, no, mean, he's no joke, Millard Fillmore. Really, I don't know anything else about him except that he inspired a duck comic. <laughs> uh, like, what did he, what, what, why, I, I'm Canadian again. Uh, I, yes, the vagaries of spelling, I guess, okay. is what it comes down to, ultimately. But really, if that, is there anything more? At this point in 170 the 170 years after his presidency, there's not much more that the American public can say other than Millard. <laughs> okay. Chuckle, chuckle. Okay. Uh, but truly, he was, if we want to get into it, I'd say a below average president who did very little, 
um, and essentially held out the term for Zachary Taylor, who died in office. Okay. All right. Another one who died in office, Warren G. Harding. Another one who succeeded a president who died in office, that's John Tyler. And the man who should have been a great president, but instead was a failure almost, is Martin Van Buren. To talk about some of these guys this, at I, any point, if you want. But I, I was just going to say, this is a, a crazy factoid, but I, one of his descendants is a woman named Ashley Van Buren, who was also active in theater. She was a producer for a title of a show. This is, I feel like the line between musical theater and pres presidential, presidential history is shockingly Well, I think Lin-Manuel thought the same and yeah, yeah, no. laughing all the way to the bank. Exactly. All right. Um, and the failures. These are people who should, I mean, again, there's a lot of hope in some of them, and in some cases a lot of hatred. Um, but these are people who failed, in my opinion, to move the country towards greatness. Herbert Hoover, Franklin Pierce, Yes, James Buchanan, and now you know why I was asked to do this, because the question was, is James Buchanan still our worst president? We'll see the answers later. I say no, but there he is as a failure. Andrew Johnson um, and William Henry Harrison, who died in office. That's the shortest term. Yes, indeed. If that's you, one of the your... Answers on the front. The um, I don't want to spoil uh, it, but he's one of them. And, okay, and Donald Trump. I have his failure. That's great. And we could talk about why that is. Now, I realize I skipped a couple, and this happened in my other live stream, so I know I'm not making James Monroe a failure. My apologies. I actually had James Monroe as a B, so we'll move him up there. Wow. And for Richard Nixon, I actually don't have him as a failure. I have him as a D. So, holding off on Joe Biden still, because I did definitely want to get input on it and, again, get your take on where we stand. So, where should who should I move? You've already dunked on Reagan, go for it. I, I mean... Millard could be an A, if you really no, want. No, 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 no. Um, I'm not that invested. Um, again, Herbert Hoover, I can't help it. Annie is, was my first exposure. Uh, sounds like he needs to go up. No, no, uh, I, uh, there were no uh, chickens in the pot. That's right? right. Wasn't that the whole... A chicken in every pot was the campaign slogan of 1928 when Hoover was elected by 1932. Great Depression. I, there were no chickens. Yep. There was a cluck you joke in Herbert Hoover <laughs> that it took me... A long time to get. Well, if I had known that the musical theater would define this presentation, I, am I, so might, have, sorry. I might have I, done a little preparation. I, I it um, just, like the way that you just have presidential facts in your head, I, okay. these are just bubbling up unbidden. Well, again, speak now. Uh, who should be an A? Who should be a B? Who should be a C? Who should be a D? Who should be an F? Audience, go ahead. No, I will. And to answer the question, it's yes to all of the above. The, I try to use a kind of holistic approach where I look at the 10 categories as defined by the presidential poll from C-SPAN. Economics is a huge part of that. Social impact, definitely. Um, relations with Congress, foreign affairs, leadership, advancing civil rights and, and equal rights in this country. Um, these are component parts. And I think if you want to have a kind of extra bump in any one of those categories, that's when we sort of fight over where these presidents should be. So I've tried to use an A, B, C, D, F scale to kind of just group them without really micro uh, ranking them. Because when I was asked to do it, I actually had to rank from worst to first. I actually had to do the, the one through 44 um, without, without Joe Biden though. And that was even harder. So here, hopefully, we can get more agreement on sort of this A through F scale. But even then, I think if you're going to really focus on any one category, it's going to be hard to accept the overall picture in making an assessment. It's an excellent question. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else have a favorite president they want to share at this point? No? Um, I was sharing earlier that my favorite is Lincoln. Okay. And I'm originally from Kentucky. And in August, I visited the log cabin um, where he was born. The birthplace. So his, like, It's amazing. A National so Historic Site. Okay, thank you. All right, a vote of confidence. Go ahead. Sorry, one question. I have just, I want to preface this with the person who I didn't cover the UC. I'm not a fan of Okay. Why do you have, what, what is your opinion as to why the president is so important? Why, 
or to ask it another way, why was his presidency a failure? That's, that's what I'm ranking it as a failure. Right, so why, yep. why, why, how would you say, because I agree with you, mm -hmm. but I haven't really looked into it in sure. detail. Yeah. Why would you say his presidency was a failure? Well, again, it helps to use history. It helps to compare him to some others whom we have as failures and to assess them along those same categories. And again, it, it comes down to crisis leadership. He's one of the worst performers in that arena. And this pandemic has certainly changed our view of his presidency. I think before the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, he might have actually scored higher than he did. I think since 2019, he's fallen even further in the estimation of historians. Then we get to 2021 and his performance on January 6th, and that sealed the deal. And from that point forward, there's not been a historian who's had a leg to stand on to rate him as anything other than a failure. Again, he's also the most recent and the one whom we have the least perspective on. And the fact that we, I have Barack Obama as a great or near great president should give you a sense that if you're going to great Obama as great, that necessarily puts Trump as a failure. So I think you've already seen where he was going from very early on if you look at the kind of symmetries among these two men. Uh, do you mind if I add uh, from mm -hmm. my... I am not an expert perspective, but um, I am a former lawyer, so I can opine a teeny bit Please. on the law side of things. Um, just that uh, his erosion of rule of law, of the power of the presidency, of uh, just, uh, the Supreme Court, the, the super shady, that's a legal term I learned in law school, <laughs> super shady, elevation of Gorsuch, uh, Kavanaugh, yep. um, and then Amy Coney Barrett, uh, all three were had asterisks on their nomination processes, on their backgrounds. Like there was, there was something for each of them right. that suggested that this was not how things had previously done. There was no sober second thought involved. Right. There was no process. And so the, the weakening overall of, of n norms, of norms. regulations, of, of sort of like um, the safety nets. Sure. That, that's, I mean, and that's, he did that across the right. board. I think those critiques are going to fade in time, honestly. I think the things that are going to stand out are the macro events uh, that happened between 2017 and 2021. Politics tends to get forgotten. Um, but but we, the we, court, the well, court is but the... But see, I did not talk about the Supreme Court okay. in any I'm one ready. of these presidents. I'm ready. No, I'm just saying that one could really look at that as a category, but it's really, it's actually a small part, I think, of how we assess presidents is their court picks. Because in a way, that's the individual justices own decisions at that point. Sure, um, but and like, in fact, it's been shown that sometimes very conservative justices will move liberal and vice versa. So it's hard to say where those three, for example, are going to end up in 30 so, years. I mean, so. that's the one point I would give Reagan, right? Sandra mm -hmm. Day O'Connor. Yep. Yep. Um, but uh, for the for like the the court right now, mm -hmm. like uh, let's say if Biden expanded the court, yep. <laughs> like that would be a major thing that yep. I think would have to accrue to his presidency yep. and the grade overall. Well, I've written about that, and I think if Franklin Roosevelt couldn't do it at the height of his powers in 1937, I don't know how Joe Biden is going to do it, and that brings me to ranking Joe Biden. Okay. Now, Great. again, this is going to change. He won't be ranked formally until 2025 if he's a one-term president, or 29 if he's a two-term, or anywhere in between. Um, but I think it's important to use these rankings as they kind of stand now to see where you would fit him. So again, this is just my own blush on where he fits within it. I had previously about eight months ago had him as a B. I'm now going to put him in a C category, right there between Ford and Carter. And depending on what happens, I think he's either going to go ahead or behind Jimmy Carter in many ways. It's my feeling on Biden as a Canadian. I know, right? I know Anthony's, <laughs> Anthony's here now. We already, I already shouted out Carter. I already shouted out <laughs> Carter on your, on your behalf. Um, uh, so I feel like I, th I return to your A line mm -hmm. and Lyndon Johnson yep, saying, what's a presidency for then? Right when he was when right. when he was being cautioned not to per, like push forward on the Civil Rights Act, right. it's like what's a presidency for then? I want to see Biden say that. I think that is the thing. And by the way, Trump said that. Trump got into office and he was like, "What's a presidency for then? I'm the president. I'll do what I want to do." The fact that he sits in the middle of the 44 people ranked uh, now 45 uh, is not a bad thing. In fact. Um, I think this is a safe place to, to th sort of be more, how should we say, sober-minded in assessing greatness because it helps us to really put perspective on what presidential greatness is. It's about handling crises. It's about performing sort of in the moment. And as we'll see, it's about essentially being able to pass policy to work with Congress. He has three years to do that. 
but he's not a failure as of now, and I don't think he's great as of now. That's why I didn't see. What could he do to be great? I really, that is usually where I draw the line. Okay, yeah. Uh, right. I would just say that he could act like Lincoln. I mean, you could use that kind of phraseology. He could act like Johnson. And I, I've written a piece where I say that. Here are ways he could act, I've said, and here are what other second-year presidents are facing. Um, but economic and social conditions tend to dictate that. And again, we are not really sure where we are, I think, uh, as, as a society in 2022. So can I ask you, when you're, when you're assessing mm -hmm. uh, Biden, so what, what elements are you assessing? You're assessing like, I, I would put um, his elevation of Kamala Harris to VP as a, as a strong factor. Sure. Is that something typically? That's going to be advancing justice okay. for all, which he does very highly on, okay. as does Barack Obama. Um, and in that way, I think it's his ability to reach more in those categories could elevate him. Absolutely. And it could stand out again. We are almost taking for granted the historical un and unprecedented nature and final and it's sort of like our first woman in, in, in power in this way. Totally. But again, I think we've already taken it for granted by 2022. It's hard to give it its due right now because of everything else that has taken over our view of his presidency. Advancing justice for all. Yep, that's a big one. It's just one, though, I think, of how we assess presidents. I'd like it to be the biggest one. I know. It's, it's how we argue it out, is where we put our, our real emphasis. And again, if we were to kind of be more multivariate in our approach, it doesn't have as much room for emotion, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I know. I'm all the emotion. Okay, so... <laughs> we, do, we, do need, we do need to elevate, finally, our S's. Yes, and okay, in sorry. honor of President's Day, I'm going to move Washington and Lincoln from A to S, which makes them not only great, but superior. And this is something that is typically done if you've ever, again, participated in Tear Maker or watched it. It's kind of a fun way to end. And because of he's my own personal favorite, I'm also going to give Franklin Roosevelt the S. That's it. I mean, that feels really safe. Who would be your, like, wild card controversial S if you had to? <clears throat> it's Truman. And I actually was recently interviewed about who's the greatest president since Roosevelt, and I chose Truman. Why? Well, it, it in some ways is about continuing FDR's legacy. It's also the way he handled three major foreign policy crises in a short period, uh, end of World War II, the start of the Cold War, and the Korean War. Um, I like him. I like the, his leadership style, his executive personality. And I think, again, he is just far enough away where there's definitely nostalgia at work mm -hmm. for this moment. Um, and he, he won an election by staring down the Southern segregationist wing of his party, and he, he basically lost the South in that election to the Democratic Party. Lyndon Johnson would do the final blow when he passed the Civil Rights Act. So these are two brave presidents on issues of civil rights. He desegregated the military, which is huge. So I feel like this is a good segue into Buchanan, because he's, <laughs> yes, he's the yes. opposite. Well, he, he caved, he didn't he do anything, He absolutely right? did, and there's a reason why he's been ranked as our worst president until recently. I don't believe he's our worst president. I tend to have an order more like this at the bottom, but he definitely, I think, is a failed president. Could you want to uh, like just give a, a super brief for people? Sure, who, I'm going to. I'm going to save this. Who were in trying to track down copies so of I, your book for the last few days? Absolutely, hap happily will, and I'm just going to do that. Stop share. Um, what I wanted to do, and I'll have to. Go, sorry, guys, I'll have to go back and redo it. Go back to my uh, PowerPoint for a second because. Um, I think it's important to understand both greatness and failure in this moment, especially since, as you've seen now, I've played my cards. I, I do rank Donald Trump as a failed president, and I do think, therefore, understanding why James Buchanan is also a failure can, was actually very helpful to me in trying to make that hard, difficult ranking. Because again, I admit that we were we were very close uh, in 2021 to the Trump presidency. We were days and months away from it when I was asked to rank him. And still feels way too close. No, it, it, it's to say that it's, it's extremely difficult to be objective. And that's why I try to rely on a kind of on a statistical approach almost. These are where the historians have graded the top five. Um, this is from the last poll from C-SPAN. You'll see, again, those top five correspond pretty close to where we had it, where I rather should say I had it. Um, you'll see that James Buchanan did end in, in last place. He is fully three now, ranks lower than Donald Trump. And again, that has something to do, I think, with the kinds of people who participate in presidential polls. There were 142 of us. Um, it is ideologically diverse, and it brings in, I would say, liberals and conservatives. And I, I have to just say, there are some people who will now stand up and make a very strong case uh, for, for Trump as a much higher 
uh, rank than the bottom. So that, that, that wasn't me, but there are those who do it. Yeah, like the Federal Society, whatever, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, we're mm -hmm. other echo chambers. Totally. So this is where it ended up. Um, Can and I ask you a question? Yeah. Is our James Buchanan, Andrew Johnson, Franklin Pierce, are they below Trump because they essentially enabled him? And we're like the, you know, with, with the right. how, how uh, enabling the Civil War, enabling slavery. No, those are broad historical brushstrokes and to, to paint from 1856 to, to, to 2016 is hard. Um, but that's why we do this, is to try to understand those connections and, and, and lineages. There's a reason why the three presidents who stand next to Trump are all around the Civil War era. And the primary critique of them is enabling the South, which is to say enabling the slaveholding portion of the society to reign supreme and in not fighting for equality. So we talked about you know, this advancing justice for all. We definitely hold them unduly, I think, uh, in that regard, uh, which is to say we have no sympathy for these, these antebellum and postbellum presidents. I think the other category, and this gets to the yin and the yang factor, if Abraham Lincoln is therefore judged our greatest president, anyone who's close to him looks terrible. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that Buchanan and Johnson and Pierce on the other side look terrible compared to Lincoln. And there's a way in which Obama and Trump have something of that dynamic working right now as well. I mean, that feels like a little bit more latent mm -hmm. um, as a one as a reaction to yep. the other. Um, but uh, I think it's interesting that when you're, t when you're talking about Buchanan, Johnson, and Pierce, I mean, no one ever talks about Franklin Pierce. He really gets away with like Murder. being terrible without <laughs> actually getting yep. a lot of the blame or whatever. But, um, you know, when we talk about like true failures yeah. of leaders to, to stand up to powers of injustice yep. and, and uh, like we talk about Neville Chamberlain and um, why, why isn't James Buchanan synonymous with uh, like, why isn't he the name that is invoked in this country? Why it I feels see. like there's mm -hmm. no reckoning yep. with poor presidents. It's, they just sort of become portraits on walls and, and their legacy isn't really discussed. Well, thank you, because I think in a way that's why I wrote the book I did. This book attempts to understand how Buchanan, first of all, rose to power and then to explain his decisions as president in that context. And the primary thing I would say is that in a country that was primarily um, <clears throat> politically, I should say, divided between the North and the South, between the, the slaveholding and the non-slaveholding sections, to be a politician who rose in that world was to align with the South. So Northerners like Pierce from New Hampshire and Buchanan from Pennsylvania, they were not slaveholders at the time of their presidency, but to become president, they had to court the slaveholding South. And it's that moral bargain, really, or immoral bargain, yeah. you might say, that has held them in disregard. Uh, for a long time. And, and then we talk about crisis leadership, their failure to prevent the union from dissolving, which is an interesting way of phrasing it, but we get, it comes down to this Buchanan's blame for the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And that blame game is so strong. And I think once you start blaming presidents for events, there's no going back. They become personally responsible for events. And there again, we see Donald Trump standing in a group of people who are personally blamed for major catastrophes in this country. And I think that is why he stood at the bottom this time. I do. Uh, and I think there's, the, you know, it's uh, easy to be a Monday morning quarterback, yeah, but is. also there's, I mean, did, here's the thing. Did William Rufus King, what did he say? Was well, he like, hey, hey Buchanan, I think you should pay attention to this. Or was he like, yeah, you're doing a great job, buddy. Here. He was bed. his number one supporter, a number okay. one a better. He was from Alabama, the Deep South. He oh, okay. owned more well, there than you go. 400 slaves in his lifetime. And Buchanan aligned hand in glove with William Rufus King. King was the vice president under Pierce. And King was his, really the reason Buchanan was a national figure. What, how, why was he the reason Buchanan was? Because he, King fought for Buchanan as someone the South should support. And King's influence in Alabama and the Deep South was huge. And that's what's interesting about their friendship the other interesting thing I should say is they're both bachelors. And this gets us into, a, well, they never married. So this gets us into a moment of sort of unmarried men who put their greatest faith in other unmarried men. I mean, that is the least interesting part to me <laughs> in the sense of like, what, do, do your thing. I know, right. But um, the, the part to me that is, it's interesting is, is thinking about what is lost to history often, or just to the general historical awareness, right. are these, these people of towering 
influence who were absolutely under the radar. Yeah. Like if, if William Rufus King, like it sounds like William Rufus King is, is, is like shares a lot of blame for the full Civil War. And, and, for, and for, so that means for whatever's happening yep. now in this country. It, that is true. And I think it's also a reason why he's unknown. I think the greatest thing we can do to judge people whom, whom we blame is to essentially write them out of history. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happened. On the other hand, it does lose a story and we don't, we don't quite understand the full, really, I think, immensity of it all. So that's what I think is both good and bad. He's a forgotten figure and that's a good thing in the, in the sense that we don't want to have William Rufus King as someone we put in our public arena and someone we want to really lionize. But on the other hand, we've totally lost his contribution to James Buchanan's presidency. I mean, I guess the, uh, so. It's a it's very sad kind of yeah. silver lining, but it is. Uh, it's a it, it's a laudable thing to well, to put into the historical record in the form of your book. And so that made me um, the nation's leading historian of James Buchanan at a time when people wanted to know was he our worst president or should it go to Donald Trump? And again, you know, on the day it was released um, in that morning, um, when the results came out, this was late late June, early July. Um, I was really thinking a lot about this and how to really justify where Buchanan stood, again, as our worst president, and again, to really take on the Trump question. So I wrote a little bit about it. As I said, I participated in uh, a live stream on YouTube. Definitely check it out because I go back and forth with another presidential enthusiast. You can see our results here. Probably a less fun uh, presidential well, enthusiast. I would say less musically theater oriented, uh, but absolutely just as fun. And <laughs> Um, you'll see here that we did not use the S, but otherwise you can kind of tell um, here, here is where we ended up. You can see Jackson got a D. These are some of the people who've changed from our rankings. Uh, Reagan got a C. So, so there, it was fun to really fight over some of them. Wilson got a D. Um, so it was, it was really fun to fight with another historian over it. And I, I really enjoy that whenever possible. Again, I mentioned my book because this is why I was asked to do the ranking. It's because I understood failure and I understood what makes for failure and it, it's it can be abysmal sometimes really, literally to be down in the dumps looking at some of our worst presidents but it did give me i think an important perspective in that moment i mean we didn't even talk about some of the controversies i thought we would for sure uh, get to well, like like bill clinton yeah. you know like like the way that yep. legacies are changing in real time they absolutely are and it, it actually I will, oh, let's get to that because you know again we've been focusing so much on trump some of the more interesting results from the survey have to do with people like bill Clinton. they have to do with people like ulysses s grant and woodrow wilson and andrew jackson now here again are our our bottom three and it's been said they would be the bottom three since 2018 at the very least um, but it actually turned out to be true uh, just to say that before this last poll, Buchanan was last in all other polls, but Warren Harding was actually in the bottom five. So Trump has kind of replaced Warren Harding and John Tyler. So this is, again, just to let you know. This is what the actual ranking looked like. It was 10 categories. Again, it's hard to see, but public persuasion, crisis leadership, economic management, moral authority, international relations, administrative skills, relations with Congress, vision setting an agenda, pursued equal justice for all, and performance in the context of his time. So it's a one through 10 scale. Each president is ranked on a 100 point basis. Uh, and when I did this for all 44, um, it showed the great and it showed the not so great. It was clear to me. Uh, I just didn't wave a wand like I did today and say Donald Trump is a failure, Abraham Lincoln's great. I didn't do that. I gave him Lincoln tens, 10 out of 10 is like, you know, the Russian judge. Uh, but when it came to Trump, it was ones, a lot of ones. Um, and so that's how I came to my conclusion. I was using the numbers, using the scale, not effective one, effective five, very effective 10. I, I tried in that moment, I agonized over some of these rankings, but I tried very hard uh, to do it objectively. And I did wait to rank Trump last again to go through all 43 before him to really make sure I was giving it the fairest possible shape. It, it sounds like you were much more thorough in dealing with uh, his presidency than perhaps he was. Certainly wasn't a song and a dance. Yeah. 
Um, Bringing it back to theater. But here were the top 10. Again, my rankings were pretty close to the rankings that C-SPAN and 142 of us agreed to. Lincoln was number one, Washington number two, Franklin Roosevelt number three. And for that reason, I have elevated them to the S category. Truman's actually sixth, but I think he should be fourth, as we saw in my ranking. And Obama did crack the top 10. Barack Obama is a top 10 president as of today. I had him one smidge lower uh, in my ranking. Reagan also cracked the top 10. And it's for that reason I brought Reagan and Obama down together um, in, from an A to a B, and then we dumped Reagan to a D. Thank you. Can, can I, can mm. I, can I, I would, but just based Go on this it. conversation, I would uh, pop Obama up there. I'm, I'm going to just take all of your rankings, I'm gonna, like more in terms of who I would put down. Obama, after Truman, Ob like Obama and Kennedy, I, I let them tie, <laughs> uh, but just in front of Reagan and Jefferson. Jefferson's last. Okay. That's Fair enough. Feel. Just so you know, Thomas Jefferson has not moved one spot in 25 years. He's going nowhere because his face is carved in stone. I literally believe this. We cannot get away from his iconography, his presence, his uh, really symbolic power. And that's not even talking about history, uh, his presidency. It's something about the moment in which he emerged between Washington, Adams, and Jefferson. We still call them the founding fathers, mm -hmm. which is, again, under controversy. Maybe framers is the better way, but there they are. You're the expert. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Yeah. All right. Here they are again. They haven't changed a bit. Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, Jefferson, they're not going anywhere. They're not. And they, again, these are three Mount Rushmore presidents. Pierce, Johnson, and Buchanan, they haven't changed a whit in 20 years either. Uh, so the stability of the top and the stability of the bottom, very interesting. And again, it gives us a way to compare greatness of the more recent presidents. Well, this has actually really been fascinating. Oh. Uh, I've hung on your every word, and I've, I've felt okay. very uh, well, like highly emotional. We're almost people. done, I swear. Okay, there's more. Amazing. Uh, no, I have just a few more things to say. Yeah. Um, simply this, Grant, again, he's the hidden story. He might be the next Lin-Manuel Miranda musical. Grant, Grant, get ready. Grant has skyrocketed in the rankings. He was once considered a failed president, and he's now considered, if not average, then near great. Uh, George W. Bush also went up in the rankings. Eisenhower Based has on gone. What? I'm not going to justify. Okay. It. Uh, Calvin Painting. Coolidge okay. has gone up in the rankings. Uh, Back to and Coolidge. the people who have fallen are just as interesting. I've been talking about Jackson and Wilson. Turns out Grover Cleveland took a massive hit in, in the 20 year span here, as is Zachary Taylor, James K. Polk, and Richard Nixon. So these are people who have fallen in the estimation of historians. Each one has its own story. The ones that stand out, I think, in terms of our current reckoning around uh, equality, civil rights, and race certainly are Jackson and Wilson. I mean, it really says something that Nixon yeah. has fallen, like mm. he was impeached, and you know, it's how low can you go, and it turns out lower. It does. Yeah. It absolutely does. And so again, it's Grant and Jackson. This, is, this was the actual takeaway for me. It wasn't Lincoln number one, Trump near the bottom. I knew that. This is what's fascinating and why we look at the period of Reconstruction and the period where for one brief eight-year period, a president who was going to enforce the 13th, 14th, and 15th Civil Rights Amendments, a president who wanted to change the, the racial sort of underpinnings of a country and try to move a country out of the 1870s into something that looks a lot like today. That's Ulysses S. Grant. He wanted a country to look like that. Jackson did not. And Jackson, in fact, w kicked off an imperialist moment that led to dispossession of native peoples from their land and indeed expanded slavery. So you can see for the exact opposite and right reasons, Grant rises, Jackson falls. And I think that's going to continue to be a trend, I think, in the rankings. Presidents who did not pursue justice for all are going to fall big time. So that's so you see that category it as really beginning played to have out. more weight. It, it played out, to your point, you were absolutely right, it played out very strongly this time around. And just to say, relations with Congress, this is one I picked out for you because this is why Obama is not, he's not quite great. He's, he's ranked very low on relations with Congress. He's the 32nd. But where is George W. Bush? You wanted to actually ask, I'll explain it. His relations with Congress were good. 
actually. They're average, but they were better than Obama's, and that's where we're getting into. He, he had a he had a much more cooperative yeah, Congress he did. after 9/11. Did. did and that this is this is the kind of stuff we look at. It's these little moments. So and um, and Obama's Congress was like like absolutely just and the stuff of legend in terms of not being cooperative. Well, the fact that Mitch McConnell said he's gonna we're gonna make him a yeah, one-term president. It, it it gets to I do not. This is the recent presidents, yeah. guys. It, I know. They, I they've know. all done poorly in this category, mm -hmm. and it does speak to our moment, a dysfunctional sort of relationship between president and Congress. We can blame either side, and we do, trust me. It's, but it's to prove, to bear out a point, I think. This has hurt the modern presidents. Yes. Okay. And uh, just the, the equal justice for all, to wrap it all up, Wilson took the biggest hit. Um, he resegregated the federal government. He um, screened The Birth of a Nation, one of the most racist films ever made in the White House. Um, and he had very poor relations with African-American leaders. So Wilson is no, no one's friend in terms of pursuing equal justice. And it's for that reason Princeton has removed his name from the Woodrow Wilson School and is now just the School of Public Policy. Wow, when did I miss that? That happened that's last year. Wow. Yep. So that's one that explains Wilson. Again, I, I rate him very poorly in this category, high in others. Um, and then lastly, debut rankings, they tend to stick. George W. Bush has had the largest bump by a factor of, of seven. Um, Obama's gone up two, Clinton two, and Trump was 41. And that's really all I wanted to say. So I'm gonna close out my screen, take any last minute questions and we'll wrap up. This, is, this was incredible. Are there any last minute uh, questions? I'm reeling. <laughs> Happy to take audience questions or just to sign books and stop there. Last minute questions about Calvin Coolidge. <laughs> you really no, Millard I, and Calvin. These are the names. I, well, they're fun names. They they're 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 we've got the double yep. letters and yeah. Um, they're they're they're. My mind is spinning. I want to know where we can all where we can find your specific sure. rankings okay. and the reasoning behind them. Yep. The, um, on Twitter, right after the announcement from C-SPAN, I posted all my rankings right out there. I got a huge blowback. It was wonderful. Um, and I engaged with some people there. That was, that was fun. I wrote an op-ed for CNN explaining my, where I went, as well as for other outlets. I continue to write in these kinds of forums about sort of the presidency and about kind of politics writ large. Um, and I guess that social media is a good place. I'm constantly posting on it. And this is what I teach when I teach uh, in Eastern Connecticut State. And I'm researching, I continue to research uh, for a second book project. So oh, what's that. That? can you tell us about your book? You're Just briefly, I'm, I'm writing a history of the Democratic Party. <laughs> Great. And all its successes and failures. I think that that will be a fun one, <laughs> a super fun one to Thanks. dive into. Um, thank you so much for coming here today Absolutely. and uh, and bringing us all your wisdom and, and insight. This has been really fascinating. Um, the live stream, I guess if anybody's watching it, if you're watching the live stream, I will post uh, some of these links to Dr. Pasarowski's uh, articles and tweets and everything underneath sure. it so that we have it and we'll share them on the Saxworks Twitter. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, go to saxworks.com and download or sign up for your complimentary day pass so you can come visit us among the plants and the presidential historians. I mean, this is just what we do all, all day, really. We hang out and we, we talk about cool stuff. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, saxworks.com, complimentary day pass. Come say hello. And uh, thank you so much for being thank here you. today thank and you. thank you so much for being here today and now let's have some lunch <laughs> thank you it's a lot of fun i know you're fantastic thank that was you. amazing all right and i put my rankings back my cheat sheet Ooh. everything that was great sorry i should have warned you about the musical